Hi, my name is Rodney Barber, and I'm excited to be talking with you from the Verdon Organ Studios in Cincinnati, Ohio. One of the most common questions about playing the organ are what sounds do I use when I play? And what we would like to do in a series of around 10 videos over the next few weeks is show you some different registrations and possibilities whether or not you have one of these organs or whichever organ you're playing at the time you'll be able to use this information. Before we start talking about colors I would like to remind you that if you were an artist you would have three primary colors a red, a blue, and a yellow. And with those primary colors, you can make almost any other color that you would need to paint a beautiful picture. I want to remind you on the organ, and this will be a brief review because we could talk about this for weeks, but on the organ there are four primary colors. The first of these is a family called the principal sound. And if you were in America, you would see stops on an organ called principles. Let's just listen to a few of these. Here's one on the grate, which is in the middle manual. On the top keyboard, which is the swell, here's another principle. And I can use what we call couplers to combine these sounds on one keyboard and have what I would call a principal chorus. Now depending on what country I'm in, the principles will sound a little different. So some of the names you want to look for in principles are diapason, Geigen diapason, mantra, principle in Germany, octave, these are all words, if you look on an organ, you will see that these are principal sounds. I'm going to recommend a book called The Organist Manual by Roger Davis, where there's actually a dictionary in there where you could look these up and find what all the principles are and how they are applied to music. And also, you could simply just do this online. Use your search engine, your Google, or whatever you have, and go online and find this information. Okay? Now, one more thing about the principles. They're in different octaves. You'll see numbers on stops of organs, 16, 8, 4. If I were to push one that said 8 and play a G and sing a G, that's the same pitch. So 8 foot is the unison pitch on the organ. If you see a principle 16, which you might often see in the pedal, and play that same G, if you can hear that, that's an octave lower. If I see one that says four, it's going to be an octave higher. If I see one that says two, even an octave higher. So within the principal family, we have all these different pitches that enable us to produce what is called a principal chorus. All of these are principal sounds. And uh, later on, we're going to show you how to combine them and use them in specific pieces. But right now, uh, we will move on to another family. I should also say before we leave, though, that the principles are the awe sounds of the organ. If you look at a facade of pipes, you're going to see these principal sounds because they're the most important. They're the voice of the organ, the awe sound, or I could say the God sound, words for God, Jehovah. Uh, Yahweh, this awe sound. So many people equate this principal sound with the God sound of the organ. Second family, flutes. Flutes are round. Flutes are ooh, and they're much like the flutes that we play uh, in orchestras, okay? So, flutes, here's one. On the top keyboard. On the bottom keyboard, the choir. Some flutes have a lot of articulation and what we call chiff. And some flutes don't have that. They would be for beautiful melodies. But the ones with the chiff, more for Bach or Baroque pieces. Again, flutes are in different octaves, and they make just beautiful combinations. Here's an eight-foot flute and a two-foot flute.
flutes are wonderful for solos, or flutes are wonderful to accompany singers or choirs or other solo stops. Lots of versatility in the flute family. If I want to turn this into a gospel organ, all I have to do is turn on what we call a tremulant, and these flutes take on a whole different character. That's our second family of tone. Our third are the strings on the organ. I call these the mmm sounds of the organ. They're beautiful sounds and very quiet, used for preludes, for interludes, for quiet accompaniments, that kind of thing. So here's the string on the swell. This is called a solitional. Strings are often what we call paired in twos, what we would call a celeste. So if I take this unison sound and turn on the celeste, it's tuned just a little bit sharp in this case, and you hear a movement in the sound, which is really quite beautiful. One thing that's fun is to use our couplers and take strings from all the different keyboards and manuals and combine them together and create a lush string chorus. So just to review the principles of the awe sounds, the big sounds I would use in playing hymns or pieces like Bach or Buxtehude. The flutes are quieter sounds, round sounds. These strings are very quiet and used for mostly accompaniments. And the last family are called the reeds on the organ, and they're often in red, if you could see these stops here. And they are our trumpets, our clarinets, our kind of uh, in-your-face sounds of the organ. Here's a French oboe. Here's a bassoon. Here's a beautiful trumpet. And remember our numbers, the 16 in the pedal is a big reed sound. There are some reeds that are designed to play chords on, and this is called a reed chorus. There are some reeds, like our trumpet, that are just to play solo notes. So there you have it, a brief introduction to our four families of tone. I want to remind you to think about that book, The Organist Manual by Roger Davis, published by Norton, that'll have that whole dictionary in there where you could take it, sit down at the organ you are playing, and then what you could do is look up these definitions and know exactly on your organ what sounds you have, and that's very important when you start applying them to the pieces that you're going to be playing. Now, on this organ, and maybe on some of the ones that you have, there's actually a fifth family of tone, and that's the orchestral sounds. Through the use of MIDI technology, many organs now have, through an additional MIDI sound module, or by things uh, on this organ, they're called extra voices, and they're actually in the organ. You don't have to have anything extra. And these are orchestral sounds, very different from organ sounds. Let me just show you a couple of those. These can include a string ensemble, simply by pushing this tab. Here are some choral voices, or choral ahs. Here's a pan flute.
Now, some people think these are not organ voices at all, and you're absolutely right. But it's amazing with all of the music that we're asked to play in our churches now. You go through that hymnal, you see traditional hymns, you see Reformation chorales, you see glory and praise music from the Catholic Church, you see contemporary worship songs. And in the use of classical music, if you're playing some transcriptions like music from Handel's fireworks or water music, you now have these sounds, even sounds like a harpsichord. which are very authentic to the classical music that we're asked to play at weddings and memorial services and church services. So now we have sounds that we can combine with the organ sounds to make this a beautiful musical experience for your congregation. So we've had a lot of information so far. I hope that you will review this and we'll look forward to a series of 10 videos that we are going to make for you that go through 10 organ pistons using these primary organ colors. And I think once that we have done that, you're going to see that you have both a plan and a resource to play any kind of music that you would for whatever worship situation you have. Uh, if you have any questions about this, contact us at Verdun and we'll be glad to respond to you personally and look forward to seeing that next video which will be coming up soon.